All right, once you have the um, vapor cone soldered in place, take your collar piece, bend it uh, into a circle, and fit it down into the opening on the top of the vapor cone. And what you're going to want to do is overlap this, the seam of this, exactly the same way that you've overlapped this. So it sort of locks into place. And just take your hands and spread it out as much as you can. It sh you should be able to get it just about perfect so there's no gap in this seam right here at all. And once you have it, once you have it spread out all the way, take something sharp, a knife, a screwdriver, uh, even a sharpie, and just mark, mark your seam. And we'll take it out. Okay. Um, so I've got this marked. I've roughed up the edge. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on it. Wrap it around. Line it up with my mark. And clamp it. Clamp it with my clamp here. And then we'll solder it together. You want to make sure you've got the top and bottom lined up so it's nice and flat up here. And, um, and we're going to solder it together. Once you have the collar soldered together, uh, just straighten it by hand and uh, stretch it down in to the cone. Grab it with both hands and you should be able to pull it right up into place. It should fit for you perfectly. Line your seams up and then just give it a just line it up by sight making sure you have it level all the way around and you are ready to solder. Because this collar doesn't have a rivet in it, when you heat around to that seam there, you run the risk of popping it apart. So what I like to do is take a pair of locking pliers and just stick them on the very edge of this seam. God darn it. When you heat the collar here, um, generally I like to heat it from, uh, I guess, shooting down into the, the cone there and um, sort of try and hit the back of the collar and get the, the cone here just slightly. You can't stick your torch all the way down in there. Um, a, that'd be, you'd run the risk of exploding the thing uh, according to the torch manufacturer. And B, you're going to run out of oxygen in there, so the flame is going to go out. So just try and shoot it down in and get a, an even mix there. Alright, just like the, the rest of the rivets that we've set, we want to we pound the back of this copper out so we have a nice flat surface here in front where the top of the rivet is. It's a pretty tight clearance back here and um, not really big enough to get a hammer back in there. A couple ways you can um, work around that. First way, um, and probably the easiest way, you could drill a pilot hole and whatever piece of um, you know whatever metal backing you were working with and set the rivet down in that hole and then just pound pound around it another thing you could do is just take a common 
Um, socket, small socket. We're working with 3 16th socket here. And set the rivet down in the socket. Set it down on uh, your surface and then just pound that down in there until it's flat. Um, once you've done that, we can go ahead and pound this rivet out flat. We're going to be pounding from the back side. You, you're going to want to hold it up off the, your surface and just sort of pound down. There we go. All right, after your uh, cap is soldered, I'm sorry, after, it's, after your cap is riveted together, um, you're going to want to install the cap plate and this can be a bit tricky. The easiest way to do this though is to stick the entire cap in cap plate into the into the cap here and then set it on the solid surface. All right. And put some good pressure on it with your hands, holding it down to your surface. Take um, the handle end of a hammer, and while you're holding down on this, just tap it down into place. Perfect fit. Okay, the cap is much thicker than... Um, so the cap plate is much thicker than the walls of the cap. So when you're heating, when you're applying heat, uh, when you're soldering this joint, you're going to want to be heating the thicker copper and not the walls of the thin walls of the of the cap. Um, because if you if you heat the thin walls of the cap, it's going to be way too hot by the time the plate gets hot enough to um, to melt the solder. After you have the cap soldered into place, we'll go ahead and solder the seam of the um, the cap here, the side of the, uh, the side seam on the cap. We've uh, rigged our locking pliers up here in a vise, so dab onto your piece with your locking pliers and then secure them in a vise, which frees up the bottom of the seam for applying heat and allows you to reach in and solder on the inside.